welcome to Media Horrors. Today we're reviewing Uwe Boll's 2005 adaptation of the video game Blood Rain. Let's tear this thing apart and see if we can spill more blood than Uwe Boll did as I throw this to the round table. A little background information. The video game Blood Rain was basically designed to show off how well they could animate breasts. And an ass. Which in 2002 was not particularly well. This film is directed by the infamous German filmmaker Uwe Boll, the mastermind behind a number of the worst movies of all time. The thing that shocked me was, despite already having a reputation for horrible films, he was able to get some honestly excellent actors in this movie. They've got to eat. But overall, there's just this sense of not caring from everyone in this film. I mean, Ben Kingsley. Sir Ben fucking Kingsley is the villain in this movie. Mahatma Gandhi is the villain in this movie. He's goddamn Itzhak Stern. He plays the villain Kagan, and you can't look at him and not think he looks insanely silly. I mean, his wig. Why does he need a wig? He doesn't need a wig. It looks silly, particularly when he forgets to even wear it in one scene. Maybe it's because his character in the game had hair? If I remember correctly, his character in the games had hair. Yes, because Uva Bull is very concerned about staying true to the source material. We've also got Michael Madsen, and have you ever wanted to hear Michael Madsen try a British accent? No. Good, because he doesn't do one here. I've been hunting vampires since before you were born. And there was always one that I suspected or hoped existed. Madsen essentially goes through this entire movie like he's Mr. Blonde in the Middle Ages. We have to stop the damn beer. What, what? Cheerio. He had about as much enthusiasm for this movie as... We did. If not less. No, he showed up. If he'd shown less interest than us, he wouldn't have even shown up. He didn't even care when he got skewered. It amuses me to torture an audience. We've also got Michelle Rodriguez, who was... Hot. That was shallow, cheap, and based solely on hormones. Works for me! God damn it, I hate that she was in this. And she was almost as bored as Michael Madsen. And the casting choice I really don't get is... Hot patootie fuck my soul! Meatloaf? What the fuck is Meatloaf doing in this? Apparently he'll do anything for money as well. I mean, he shows up for about five minutes wearing, once again, a ridiculous wig. I don't like this thing! <laughs> and here's what I'm doing with it! <laughs> hey, I liked that wig! It was stupid, but it was so stupid that I think it was intentional. We could see his hairline! And he was in a scene with a bunch of prostitutes who apparently got paid collectively about 150 euros to appear in that scene. So what you're saying is that Uwe Boll is not only a bad director, but also a horrible person. And immediately after that, he is killed by sunlight. And yes, they burnt the meatloaf. His name, His name is Robert Paulson. None of the actors, even the ones who were trying, knew what accent they were supposed to be doing. I, I guess they all asked Uva Bull and he just said, European. Because they all seemed to hail from the Midwest via Germany, Italy, Scotland, Shire. I think I heard someone switch accents mid-sentence. Who was it? Michelle Rodriguez? No, it was Rain. She was played by Christiana Loken. Also, a lot of the complaints you're voicing about the accents, a lot of that, much like just about everything else in this movie, is attributable to a Uva Bull. Apparently, the woman that wrote the original script for this film took far longer than intended to crank out a passable first draft, and she was concerned it wasn't very good. Instead of telling her to edit or rewrite the script, 
Uva Ball just took what she wrote, made his own changes, and then told the actors to take a crack at it. This movie made me wish I was on crack. Anyway, the film starts with Rain being held as an attraction at a circus where they put her arm in water and it starts to blister and boil, which is weird because it's not holy water and vampires are only supposed to be affected by running water in vampire lore, but what the fuck? Then they give her blood so that she can heal her arm in front of the crowd, and she has a blood stash. You are made of stupid. I just kept imagining a poster of her saying, Got blood? And then she gets broken out by a friend or something. And they run away from the circus and plan to go to Carolot. I don't know. All right. Now let's let Professor Nerd explain a few things about vampires. Vampires are weak against a myriad of substances, according to various vampire lore. These are garlic, crosses, sunlight, running water, holy water, and the one a lot of people argue about is silver. This movie focuses on the three most well-known weaknesses. Rain is immune to crosses because she is a damphir, not a full vampire, and her goal is to collect certain relics of power, which include the eye, which makes her immune to water, and the heart, which makes her immune to sunlight. Wasn't most of this actually explained through a psychic plot dump? Yep. What's sad is that the plot about the relics was taken from the video games, but the plot is put into a context where it makes no freaking sense. In the video game, Rain is part of the Brimstone Society, that organization the movie keeps talking about, before the game even starts, and the Brimstone Society is the framing device that propels her to find these relics. So, since he wanted to put the plot of the video games in a different environment, he had to put in these stupid fucking contrivances in order to keep the plot going. He kept the plot going? I never said he succeeded! I have a question. What the hell was Billy Zane's character in this? I kept trying to figure this out because I never thought I would have to say this, but... Billy Zane was underused in this movie. Yeah, he actually seemed like he was trying. And in answer to your question, he played Michelle Rodriguez's father. What? Supposedly, her father was the reason she betrayed the Brimstone Society, because she thought he would save her sorry hide. Not that you'd know this, since that element of the plot is very clumsily brought up and never expounded upon. My... God, the characters in this movie were ridiculously bad! They weren't bad, just bland. That's not even tomato-tomato, that's tomato-tomato. They were like the vampires in Angel and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Except that Angel had better effects. They looked like the vampires from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie. Don't forget that one vampire that looked like Count Orlock before Fat Camp. So what does this movie have to work with? I mean, it has a semi-popular video game franchise to base itself off of, a cast of talented actors, and what pisses me off the most? One of the best film sets in vampire movie history. Vlad the Impaler's Castle! Not a replica, the actual fucking castle. They filmed this movie in Romania! On site! And yet the film still looks cheesy, stupid, and cheaper than something a high school drama department could have put together. So, let's actually talk about the characters. Michael Madsen and Michelle Rodriguez are part of the Brimstone Society Club gardening group or something. Michael Madsen plays Vladimir. But I didn't actually figure this out until around the halfway point through the movie because I kept wondering... Who's this Vladimir person they keep referring to? Michelle Rodriguez plays a person, but not particularly well. Correction, a person with tits. Really, Jimmy? What? Rain is just tits McGee. Don't make me hurt you. Vladimir has motivations, I suppose, and Michelle Rodriguez hates Rain. It's never made clear why, and... Then... Fuck. Here it comes. Keep your friends close. Enemies even closer. Vladimir taught me that. No. 
They didn't. Father taught me many things here. He taught me in this room. He taught me, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. They quoted the Godfather! Uva Bull does not have the talent of Francis Ford Coppola's belly button lint, and he quoted the Godfather! Hell, he doesn't have the talent of Nicholas Coppola's belly button lint, and he quoted the Godfather! No, you do not quote one of the most influential lines in all of cinema without at least giving a nod to its source material! You do not! I mean, really, why even bother having original dialogue at this point? Play it, Vlad. Play as time goes by. I'm sorry, Katerin. I can't do that. Because frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. What we've got here is failure to communicate. I still <laughs> Oh, dear God! I think we broke Cora. Well, speaking of Michelle Rodriguez, <laughs> I would like to mention something else specific that really pissed me off. They apparently went to the Gap for their costumes because Michelle is not wearing period attire. She's not wearing a corset. She's not even wearing military equipment appropriate for this time period like leather armor. Yeah, she's wearing a nice seasonal tank top from the spring line. Speaking of costumes... For some stupid reason, Uva Bowl thought it would be a good idea to move the film's plot away from the setting and time of the games, while still keeping Rain's costume the same. That makes total sense! That would be like if Jimmy strapped on a stormtrooper outfit and went to fight the Romans! It would freak him out. First things first, what type of stormtrooper outfit are we talking about? Because either way, it's preposterous. I'm just curious which, because one of them would be ironically closer to Blood Rain than this shit is. Christ, we need to talk about the battle scenes. I love those scenes, like when they kept chopping up that monk's body, because he apparently wasn't dead enough. You seriously fucked up? Yeah, they were pretty much just turning him into gardening mulch at that point. Or when they slashed or stabbed someone and the blood shot off in the entirely wrong direction. Jimmy, if I shot you in the head and you bled out through your arm, it would still make more sense than the fight scenes in that movie. I don't know who did the camera work for this, but they got right up next to the fight so that you could clearly see the blade passed more than a foot from the guy's body. That's raw talent for you. Not only were the effects bad, but the editing was god-awful. It kept jumping all over the place, and I, I was like, Oh no! That guy's getting stabbed! I have no idea who they are, or whose side they're on! The humanity! You could probably have just had janitors and cameramen stabbing each other, and I... Might not have noticed because I couldn't tell what the fuck was going on! Let's not forget about the swords themselves used in these fights. Butter knives are sharper than these things. In your typical swords and sorcery movie, sword fights would use aluminum blades that were sharpened to an extent. They must have used pressed steel or something because there was no edge or sharpness to these blades. Speaking of the effects, like Cora said before, Uva Bowl's not doing us any favors by reminding us of better movies. In the scene where Rain has to get the eye, I just kept thinking, huh, you know, I haven't watched Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in a long time. I'm going to go watch that movie. Not only that, the blades were really fake looking. They shot out of the wall. They weren't attached to anything. And they just add to the sense that they were ripping off a better movie. They even had the part where they lifted the idol off the pedestal. Also, the effects when they try to do slow motion were awful. They just made the shots look blurry or weirdly shot. But let's wrap this shit up. Uva Ball, I know that you're trying to live out your life like you're part of the film The Producers, 
but stop inflicting these horrendous middle fingers of cinema on us. I wouldn't be so mad if it didn't seem like he was taking good ideas and intentionally fucking them up. He shoots his film in an appropriate, atmospheric location and makes his sets look cheap and silly. He takes good actors and gives them a shit script and no direction to work with. He could have staged good fight scenes if he didn't have shitty effects and incompetent camera work. I'm just going to stop right there and give my rating. Why have you forsaken me? It's not completely irredeemable since there are some hilariously bad moments and a couple of good ideas, but in terms of quality, this still wouldn't even pass for low-grade dog vomit. Two out of ten. Hi, kids. I don't want to talk about this movie anymore. Hell, I don't want to ever see this movie again. But I'm probably going to see it three more times this year because that's how TV works. This movie pissed me off in every way imaginable. I'm a big fan of vampires. I probably spent too much of my life learning their lore. So I went into this thinking, okay, let's see a vampire movie. The first time I saw this, I didn't even know who Weeble was. I got so pissed off about halfway through, and that was watching the TV cut, which was missing a lot of the crap we had to watch. I have not gotten this pissed at a movie in years. I want to destroy every copy so that no one ever has to watch it again. So if you can't tell, I'm giving this movie a 2 out of 10. Not why have you forsaken me, why have you forsaken us? The entire fucking world. Let me start off with a message to our esteemed director. You son of a bitch! You are easily one of the worst things that has ever happened to film. As for the actors, I know you have to eat, but stop taking work from Uva Bowl. This film is worse than the Helsing series, Vampire Wars, and the Twilight movies combined. It took away everything that was good about vampire movies. It has no plot. The performances are either minimal or crappy because of the shitty script and absolute lack of direction. I'm giving this a 2 out of 10. Why have you forsaken me? You suck, Uva Bowl! Okay. This is the worst movie I've watched for this group. I know I said this last time, and I'll admit, I technically like Max Payne less than this. But in terms of actual quality, this is the worst film. It takes so many good actors and somehow gets so little out of them. Meatloaf has actually done good acting in the past, but they do nothing with him here. And strangely, the score for this is awful despite the fact that you clearly have a musical talent on hand. But nope. He's there for five minutes, and then they burnt the meatloaf. It actually drags down other, better movies that aren't even associated with it. The Last Crusade and The Godfather both get dragged down just by being referenced in this movie. There really isn't that much that's forgivable about this film. But it is a 2 out of 10. There's just enough competence spread throughout its actors to prevent it from being absolutely horrible. I mean, still, this is a god-awful schlockgasm of a fucking inane drippings of shit. Well, unsurprisingly, the media horse rating is a unanimous... Why have you forsaken me? Let's hope that the next time we encounter vampires, it will be a property with a bit more meat to it. Bless you. <laughs> Some more. <laughs> <laughs>